Welcome. Let's take a look at a theorem about definite integrals. And this relates to integration of even and odd functions. Now just a quick reminder for you, even functions are functions such that if you evaluate the function at negative x, that is the same as evaluating the function at x. Those are even functions. Odd functions are functions such that if you evaluate the function at negative x, you get the opposite of what you get if you just evaluate the function at x. So let's take a look at this theorem. It says, let f be a continuous function on the interval from negative a to a. If f is an even function, then the integral over that interval is equal to two times what you would get if you integrated simply from zero to a. If f of x is an odd function, then if you integrate from negative a to a, that you get zero. So let's look at this example. We've got an integrand. Our integrand, our function here is x squared plus x to the fourth. Now, what happens if I evaluate my function at negative x? So f at negative x would be negative x squared plus negative x to the fourth power. Well, if I square negative x, that's the same as just squaring x, so that's x squared, it becomes positive. And if I re raise negative x to the fourth power again, uh, that will be a positive as well, and that ends up being x to the fourth. And so I end up with the function I started with. So in this case, our function is even. And so what this is telling us is that if I want to find the area under this curve from negative 3 to 3, because this function is even, this total area is the same as taking the area from 0 to 3 and multiplying by 2. Look, look how this function is symmetric around the y-axis and that the interval we're interested in, we're going from negative 3 to 3, the interval we're interested in is also symmetric about the y-axis. So it shouldn't be surprising that instead of integrating the function from negative 3 to 3, given that this interval is symmetric about 0 and my function is even, I could simply integrate from 0 to 3 and multiply by 2. So this could be 2 times the integral from 0 to 3 of x squared plus x to the fourth dx. Well, that's equal to 2 times x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 from x equals 0 to x equals 3. If I evaluate at my upper limit, I get 2 times 3 cubed over 3 plus 3 to the fifth over 5 minus 2 times 0 cubed plus, uh, 0 cubed over 3 plus 0 to the fifth over 5. And notice the advantage here is 
if I'd been doing the original limits of integration, I would be uh, doing essentially more arithmetic. Um, in this particular case, this simplified the evaluation because my lower limit is zero. Zero thirds plus zero fifths is still zero. So I end up with two times um, 27 thirds uh, or nine, let's go with nine, uh -huh. plus three to the fifth over five. And that almost looked like 35. There we go. And if we get a common denominator, so multiply 9 by uh, 5 over 5, we get 2 times 45 plus 3 to the 5th over 5. And 3 to the 5th is 243. And 243 plus 45 is 288 over 5. So this, the value of this integral is 576 over 5. Let's take a look at the second example. That is the integral from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4 of sine of x dx. Now sine of x is an odd function. Um, if you, for example, evaluate f at negative x, you'll get sine of negative x, which is the same as negative sine of x which is negative f of x. And if you don't recall that, let's just try f at negative pi over 4. That is sine of negative pi over 4. And sine of negative pi over 4 is negative 1 over square root of 2. Whereas f at positive pi over 4 so we have basically negative x and negative 1 over square root of 2. Now we're doing positive x. So this would be sine of pi over 4, which is positive 1 over square root of 2. So notice that... <clears throat> The function value when we use the negative x is the negative of the function value when we use a positive x. So f, our function sine of x, is an odd function. Now we've got a graph over here on the right of our function sine of x from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. Notice that we're dealing with a symmetric interval. That is, we're going from negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4. So this is a symmetric interval around 0. We have an odd function. And so this theorem tells us that the integral, the value of this integral, should be 0. And if we look at our graph here, notice that on the left side, that area is beneath the x-axis, so when I evaluate on the left-hand side, I'm getting an, an, a value that's negative, uh, not necessarily a negative area, but a value that's negative that represents the area under the x-axis, or between the x-axis and the function below the x-axis, and to the right of the y-axis, or to the right of zero, I have the exact same area, but it's positive. So it shouldn't be surprising that um, this value on the left side of the y-axis, when I add that to this value on the right side of the y-axis, then I end up with a total of zero. So let's go ahead and evaluate 
this function. So we have uh, the integral of sine of x. So the antiderivative of the sine function is negative cosine of x. And we're evaluating that from x equals negative pi over 4 to x equals positive pi over 4. Substituting in our upper limit, I get negative cosine of pi over 4 minus negative cosine of negative pi over 4. There's a lot of negatives there. So first of all, um, this minus a negative, let's go ahead and turn those into addition. And so we'll have the opposite of, so cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over square root of 2. Plus, and now we want to take the cosine of negative pi over 4. Well, negative pi over 4, if you're thinking about the unit circle, would be down in the fourth quadrant. And cosine is positive for angle values landing in the fourth quadrant. So the cosine of negative pi over 4 is positive 1 over square root of 2. So we have negative 1 over square root of 2 plus positive 1 over square root of 2. And that indeed is equal to zero. I hope you find this helpful.